Hi right, everybody, welcome to Trendy Trading. My name is Jonathan. We're gonna go ahead and get started with this week's broad market analysis. We'll be covering tonight futures, but as far as dates are concerned, we're looking at the 23rd tonight, all the way until the 28th, which is Friday. I'll be going over with you the SPY, the Q's, DIA, and IWM, and then quickly over the SKU, PCAL, and the VIX. Well, what is the theme going into this week? Big earnings coming out this week, big names, names you're very familiar with, okay? Apple, Tesla, Boeing, Johnson & Johnson, IBM, 3M, the list goes on and on, all right? And guess what? The market has created some really nice range. What does that mean? Well, basically, the more range that we create in the market, the more range we get to trade. That makes it really fun. All right. That means a little bit of volatility. That means things can really move, which means we can really make a lot of money. Now, notice here, we're going to start with the SPY on the left-hand side, folks. This is your weekly chart. Notice right here, this is a weekly. We're at SPY. In the middle, we have the daily, still looking at SPY. And over here, we're looking at trading view. It's a little bit cleaner. Uh, the lines are going to be a little bit different. I just want to give you a different perspective over here. Okay. So, SPY, overall, the I would say the medium to immediate trend is down. It's very bearish. And the longer term trend I'm looking at last year's levels is still very bullish. Now, price has simply moved down into what we would call a level of demand or support. And also, far as candle formation is concerned, we have our inside and up here. So a lot of times, prices like to move from the inside and down to the inside and up. Once again, you can go over to my YouTube page, Trendy Trading, and you can learn about all of this, okay? absolutely for free and this stuff is really going to help you so here we are at a demand level and inside and up at a level also in the EMA cloud folks right before right maybe we break this cloud maybe we don't but all I'm telling you is we have created some range and when I look at this range above it's telling me right now that prices could move to these levels see these lines these are called trendy edges so from here to here creates some really nice range. So what am I looking for here? Well, tonight, even if we were to gap down because sentiment is like super scared, people are bearish right now. The fear and greed is at fear, uh, which I think is broken. I think that in all scenarios, this would typically fall under extreme fear. Uh, but for some reason, it feels like that measurement tool is broken right now. And we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But this is looking like some nice support in here. Now, if we gap down tonight, I'd like to see the 435 through the 432 levels hold. If they don't, expect prices to move down towards the bottom of this green box. And let's go ahead and place one more number here. And that's going to come in right around this 44 EMA. That's what this is down here. I'm going to place it just under around that 426 level. All right, neutral strategy, three, four minute video on my YouTube page, very simple. We're using demand, supply, Fibonacci extensions, proprietary scripts. We're putting it all together to synergistically come together to give you that higher probability trade. Now in the neutral, we basically just stay neutral, okay? If price breaks over 440.56, I'm looking to go long into the levels annotated above i'm looking to trim pull stops up and so forth again i go over this in my video please take four minutes to go over there and watch this okay if we gap down into support i start to see buyers here i'll be watching this on a smaller time frame here in the trendy trading room and we'll be looking for my proprietary buy and sell signals once those pop up i'll be looking to take the trade to the upside again that's if we gap down into support and i start to see buy signals come in okay for some reason if we were to gap up tonight say around the 440 56 be careful i would switch over to the four hour and look for your nine ema cloud and see if we're opening up right into resistance that has basically been what we've been seeing over and over let me just show you on the four hour so you can see here Every time we bounced up over here on the right hand side, every time we bounced up into the cloud, it's been a great opportunity to go short. We had many traders and members Friday who were able to capitalize off of this pullback. Okay, so again, go over to the four hour. If for some reason we 
gap up. Just go to see if you're gapping up into some resistance here. All right, that could save you. All right, so here we have our support and or levels if we're shorting to the downside and to the upside resistance, okay? And levels where I would be trimming if I were going long. Now notice I went ahead and put some shape over this just so you can get an idea if this happens to be support where price could move up into before it turns back around. Notice that I have my proprietary scripts here and that would be resistance until proven otherwise. We'd probably most likely start to fade here and or go sideways. Wait for some more key metrics. And I mean, you could see something like this, okay? All right, over here in the daily, not much to look at. Uh, basically, it's the same thing. We're coming into a level of support. We could see these levels to the downside. Notice the divergence, though. This is really important for you traders who are not in this for the long run, but you're looking for uh, quicker results. Uh, the daily has some nice divergence. And what I mean by that, let's just say that this guy gaps down. Uh, our next candle here gaps down into 431. Well, the divergence is even bigger or the range that we could trade in. So once again, if we get a wick here, all right, a flush low is what I call it, then I would really feel convicted and confident that we could be finding ourselves rounding out and moving up towards this divergence of that cloud where I would expect resistance. Again, I would be using the four hour and the daily for those traders who have a hard time looking at just the big picture. Okay, now over here on the right hand side, this is the big picture. This is your trading view. Um, this is what I'm seeing as far as my cloud is concerned. You could go back for a long time. And basically what I'll tell you is the trend to the upside is a lot easier when price is above that cloud. When price starts to break down below the cloud, things start looking really ugly, right? And you guys can see that back in uh, when COVID hit the market. But ever since then, the cloud has always been a nice support level to get long. Well, in this case, this is actually dug a little bit deeper than the entire year, okay, of last year. And here we are basically hanging on by a cloud. And again, if we start to break this, please be aware of these levels to the downside. Pretty straightforward. Our trend overall bearish right now, but we are coming into an area of support. A flush low is what we'll be looking for. Let me go ahead and go over that with you just really quick on a whiteboard. Flush lows are awesome. So if we end, let's say we end the week like this and the candle just looks like that, this typically is not a very good sign. What I like to see is what we call a flush low. We gap down, scare everybody, and by the end of this, it turns into a hammer, and what you get is this wick that comes just like this. Flush low means that anyone that had placed their stops, you know, at or around these areas gets flushed out. That's what I want to see. I want to see traders get flushed out. I want to use my levels and then I'm going to feel convicted that we have created some range and I cannot wait to trade this to the upside. Now, please don't get this wrong. I'm just as open going short that I am long. I'm unbiased here, but these are the signs that I would be looking for, for a nice reversal to the upside. Again, we're in support, but sentiment would cause a nice flush and then a nice hammer, and then we'll be looking for that move to the upside. Pretty straightforward. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the cues. We'll make this a little bit quicker now. Since I've pretty much given you the idea of what I'm looking for across the board, it's the same thing here. Notice on the QQQ, we have some levels here. Okay, please annotate these. You can mark these down if you want to. If you're in the trendy trading room, really cool thing that I do is I send out the link and all they have to do is click on the link and then they get these neutral levels plus these targets and it's put right there on their charts, which is really nice. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see the overall yearly is actually neutral here, not as bullish as the SPY. And then the immediate trend is super bearish. Now, once again, are we coming down into support? See this blue dotted line? That's also a proprietary uh, script of mine. This is called a trendy edge. I like to see, again, a flush low and a reclaim of this area and a move over neutral before I start to feel confident in taking those trades to the upside. One more reminder, though, please look at your 4H. If for some reason, for our, if we happen to gap up, 
be looking to see if we're gapping up into resistance. If you don't know how to identify that resistance, check us out. We have trials. You can literally get half off your trial right now and hang out with us for seven days. Seven days, folks. You can learn a lot in seven days considering I'm on the mic. We're teaching. There's a lot, lot to be learned here at Trendy Trading. Notice that the shape pretty much looks the same here on the cues. Could be, you know, potential head and shoulders. Uh, nice little pullback, though. We're still in this inside and up formation, and it has not uh, broken as of right now. Again, be looking for the flush low before you even start to consider whether or not this is a buying opportunity. Over here on the, in the middle, this is your daily. Again, looks super bearish as you can see. There's no flush low here. Folks, just to give you an example really quick, this is a flush low, okay? See, at one point, this candle was actually solid. It takes everybody out, and before you know it, it comes all the way back up. Everyone gets stopped down here, and then I'm buying in this region. And notice how it comes up to the cloud, and notice we have resistance there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So if you get this flush, it turns into a hammer, you start to look for that trade, please take note of the divergence. Right now it's around 3758. So again, wherever that flush low is, that would be your divergence to the upside. Over here on the right hand side, this is your trading view. Go ahead and take a look at that. I haven't changed this from last time, meaning this inside and up here came back and touched our last target at 345.74. All right. And it looks like it worked to the tick. Uh, what I'm looking at right now is this is under the cloud. So unlike the SPY, this looks pretty scary. And when we're underneath the cloud, you really have to be on the defense. Okay, understand that things don't look so pretty when they're underneath the cloud. And this will be resistance until proven otherwise. Once we get a above the cloud, things look a lot better. You start to trend. But guess what? That time is not right now. So again, if I get the flush low and I decide to go to the upside, I'm panning through and going through smaller time frames before we can actually reclaim above here and if that even happens. So for right now, again, if I get the buy signal, I have to pay attention to the divergence of the daily, but I also have to pay attention, again, let me show you on the 4H. Notice that every time we've come up to the 4H cloud, it has been resistance until proven otherwise. Let's go ahead and get over here to the DIA or the diamonds. This is your Dow Jones DIA, just like this. We'll go ahead and put DIA over here on trading view. And please, let's follow along here to the left-hand side. So we have what we call an inside and down. That was my first opportunity to understand that this was not a buy signal. Once again, this is like the fifth reminder. Please go over to YouTube. Watch my video on topping wicks. Very, very important. If you understand how to read this and identify it, you would not be buying the top here. You would actually be looking to start going short. Now, notice that this candle looks like the SPY and the QQQ. We ended really flat. We don't have a flush low here. Again, this is what a flush low looks like. We do not have a flush low here. I'd really like to see one before I start to feel a little bit like I wanna go on the long side into resistance, okay? Now, once again, we're underneath the cloud, just like QQQ, we've broken below the cloud here. Not a very good sign. Notice this pink line, this is a proprietary script as well, trendy edge. What we'd like to see here is a reclaim. If we start to reclaim that after a flush, guess what? I'm going long into these targets. I'm looking to trim into these targets. Your divergence, obviously, up here, once again, around the 353.29. We're looking for support and or a flush around 338, 340, somewhere in this area. If buyers don't step in, guess what? You don't go long. You don't see a flush low. I'm not going long. I'm actually staying short and looking for the trade to the downside into the levels I have annotated on the chart. On the right hand side, this is again trading view. This is the bigger look. Now I did, uh, let's see, on this one, we're in the inside and up, we're below the cloud. You know, this thing could reach at around 338, which is also annotated over here on Thinkorswim. Pretty straightforward. The overall trend, immediate trend right now is bearish. The bigger trend, we're still bullish, just like the SPY. This is just a pullback. This is nice range that we're seeing. And this is how we're going to trade it going into the next week, looking for that flush low and potentially looking for that support for intraday trades until proven otherwise.
Let's go ahead and go over to the IWM. This one's very important. Let's uh, let's talk about this really quick. So again, weekly, daily, and then over here on the right hand side is going to be trading view. All right. So one thing that I did move, we had a potential inside and up here, and it broke right through that thing and guess what we're gonna have to look at it we're gonna have to be flexible you can see we broke that trend we broke below and here we are right at a proprietary trendy level and we stopped there once again though I don't see a flush low I want to see a flush and then a reclaim if for some reason we gap up and I apologize for the fact that I keep repeating this, but I really want it to sink in. If we gap up, I want to be checking the four hour and making sure that we're not gapping up into the cloud. Notice here, that thing is resistance until proven otherwise. Okay. All right, back to over here. These are your levels. Watch the video on how to trade the neutral strategy. And over here in the middle, you can see this is the daily topping wicks. Things are not looking good. We do have some nice divergence here. But first, we need to know that we're coming in to support before we actually start to look to buy anything to the upside. And if it does work out, I'd be looking for that resistance at or around those levels. Again, these are my levels to the upside. These are my levels to the downside. And over here... On trading view, notice that we have some targets. Pretty straightforward. If it breaks down below here, you could see all the way down towards 189. But before that, you have to trade these like you see them. Remember, these are support until proven otherwise. The ones to the top are resistance until proven otherwise. Very important. Pay attention to your daily and your four hour during the day to make sure that you're not buying into resistance. I tell my members this, and I'll tell you this. The better place to buy puts was not when the market started to dump. It was when the market was at highs into resistance. And sometimes you don't know where that is unless you study and understand where supply is, where Fibonacci's are, and so forth. If you do not understand those, come check us out so I could teach you. And when I teach you, you're able to learn this stuff on your own and then make those decisions based off of the education that you receive. Overall, you can see this one is a lot different. <laughs> These are red banners across the board. This is super bearish, uh, but we did come into a level. Again, I'll be looking for a possible flush low, and I say that because I feel like we're in oversold conditions. I also feel that we have some amazing earnings on deck, and I also think that, you know what? You have to turn this around, folks. Just like when the market's only going up, what do traders tell you? The market can't just go up. Well, guess what? The market can't just go down. There has to be a cycle in here where we potentially get one to three days to the upside. I don't want you to miss it. So pay attention to the levels. Look for the signs. And guess what? You could have an amazing week. Let's go ahead and go into what I feel like is the most important thing. I'm not going to talk about gold, TLT, TNX, or the dollar for right now. I'm actually going to go right here into the skew. Please pay attention to the right-hand side. We'll go right here. Now, the skew is your hedge funds. They're basically you know, saying, hey, risk on or risk off. Last week, we came into this green level. We talked about risk on. Uh, going over to the neutral strategy, you could tell we just breaking through those levels to the downside. And so this level, this 130, doesn't necessarily mean it's 100% 100, 100 risk on. It means you got to have like a plan. And our plan is to watch those levels I just gave you. This is just an instrument that can be used in the background. All right. Now I'll tell you, it still shows that we could have more fear out there. And the reason why is because you got the fear and greed only at 43, which is just a fear and not necessarily extreme fear. So when I look at that, I want to see extreme fear, folks. I want to see that this skew continues down maybe towards 127, 125. Then we see extreme fear. Then we see what's called a flush low. And then that's where I want to be getting long. Now, I will tell you as a disclaimer, I did start some Delta 30, Delta 35 spy calls 80 plus days out. This is a process that I do here at the Trendy Trading uh, community. And basically with all of the sell-off, we've been doing well to the downside, but it feels a little extreme. So I'm just kind of getting my toes in there and starting to slowly buy some Delta 30. And they're, again, about 80 plus days out. 
okay so that's what I'm looking for again pay attention to the skew it's just an instrument in the background we'll be using now let's go ahead and talk about uh, the P call all right let's open this up and we're gonna go here to the P call now why is this important I'm gonna explain this just really quick uh, we closed out at 1.05 now a lot of times I like to do a 10 day moving average uh, the P call hasn't been very reliable uh, for the most part um, at least in my opinion in the last year but now it's starting to make sense where I'm showing you where the skew is we're close to risk on I'm showing you that on the SPY, Q's, DIA, and IWM that we're coming into potential support. And this P call is telling me this, that the majority of participants are on the put side. When the majority of the participants, that's you and I, are on the put side, guess what? They rip it. Okay, so be careful. I'm not saying they have to rip it. What I'm saying is look at all the things I just taught you and went over and be looking to see if we get those signs because the market wants to get everybody on the put side they want to make you fearful and when you do that they'll rip it and you'll sit there like a deer in the headlights if you do not know what's coming and you'll be afraid to execute so again all these are just instruments that I use to help me get convicted for that next trade now let's go ahead and look at the VIX. Obviously, this is super important. We want to look at the volatility index. You can see here, uh, this is what we use, um, and I'll continue to use it over and over and over. It works very well, meaning my levels. Uh, once we break over that 2035, we enter a caution area. We want to be super careful, um, and because there's a lot of volatility coming in, we ended very high up here towards 28 and because of that volatility is high what does that mean if you're going to try to trade be careful all right just understand that ranges the expansion of the move is greater than what you're used to so therefore I can't go into this type of market this is me I can't go into this type of market with the same sort of process that I would use when the volatility is low so if you're convicted on one side or another you have to have a plan you know do you uh, increase your stop but decrease your allocation so smaller amount in a trade but give it a little bit more wiggle room to understand that the price of the the instrument that you're trading could move a lot more than what you're used to okay you got to have some rules what I'm telling you right now though as long as we're over 2035 just be careful um, I like to have the VIX over here in the corner kind of watch it if it starts to uh, drop then you'll notice that the market will typically start to move up so put all that together flush low hammer support Watch the VIX. Is it dying into uh, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame? If it is, then things are starting to look a little bit better to the upside. Okay. All right. So that's the VIX. Uh, as far as ES futures, uh, oil futures, Bitcoin, guys, I put out my projections for 2022 for the end. Last year, I came literally within like a point or two uh, of calling the exact target. So you don't want to ignore, uh, you know, what I am projecting for 2022. Make sure you have the charts on your desktop, your refrigerator or something. Put it out there. Uh, I know what I'm doing. I love these levels. I hope they help you. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. If you want to join our awesome community, um, please do so. We have a trial coming on. It's half off. Also, the newsletter that's under Twitter, it's free, folks. My Twitter handle is Trendy John, T R, the number three, N D Y J O N. Come follow me. Sign up for the newsletter. From that, you're going to get all these levels written out and um, basically my sentiment for the week. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you like this content, please give me a like. Uh, let your friends know. We also have an awesome affiliate program uh, where you get paid just to be a member here. We really appreciate you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow.